Hello everybody, welcome to CS202 Online. Almost to the end of the semester actually, we're, we're going into the second uh, to last topic. So the topic of the day and actually for the next couple of weeks is going to be linked lists. So while today we might get to coding, I really want to first introduce you to the concept of linked lists. So let us begin. Let us begin by introducing the, the need for a linked list, and then I can explain what a linked list is. So, so far, when we have been storing data, we have pretty much done only one way of storing data, but really kind of split into two subways. And what I mean by that is when you're storing a homogeneous uh, set of data, and remember homogeneous being the same type. And I'm, of course, talking about arrays. So when we are storing an array in memory, you know, we do that because we're storing data of the same type, right? And we're storing a potentially undefined amount of data, right, that, that we have to figure out. So what, the first thing we typically do is we find out what the size is going to be in this case, and then we dynamically allocate it using new or, you know, using new or malloc, I suppose and then you put in your data. Alternatively, you can use a static array in the sense of like you fix you fix it at compile time by making something like int a5, so it's always of the size 5. And what you end up basically doing is you you say it's always going to be this size, so just go ahead and make it be, you know at, at 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 when the program already starts it's already made at that beginning time. But you define that size at compile time, right? And then, of course, the other one that I said is with, with dynamic allocation, in which case you, you use a pointer to remember where you are being allocated that memory. And you use the keyword new, the type, and then the size, right? But the size, while it can be a fixed number, that will be no benefit in, in using this instead of the one above. So you typically will make this some sort of variable, and that variable will change define, depending on how much space you need. So it could be something as simple as reading in that variable at some point in time and then uh, allocating it to that size, right? So this is what we've been doing so far. Now, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using arrays as a data structure to store, you know, homogeneous set of data? And of course, we found out that we can store some, some, some heterogeneous data by using casting, you know, for example, we can use polymorphism to store a common type. So like in the uh, creepy assignment you're working on, you have a base type that, or, or in the inspector gadget assignment, you have a base type that is the entity or the gadget. And then from there, that's a pointer. And then you can store in that pointer any, any of the derived classes, such as all the different gadgets in the gadget assignment or the human or singularities in the creepy assignments, right? So technically, you're not storing it all of the same thing because they're pointers, right? And you can use that same approach to do just about anything if you use reinterpret cast, which is not the ideal thing and it's kind of hackish, but you can technically store whatever you want. You can store an integer in an array of cars or in any kind of array, as long as what you're storing are pointers and then you just make those pointers point to different data types. So the issue with that is that you then, you gotta remember what's stored where so you can cast it back to its original thing when you're trying to access it. Otherwise, the data is just as well lost. And that's the cool thing about polymorphism, that you don't need to worry about that because with virtual functions, it'll know which one to call, right? So aside from those special cases, arrays are typically associated as having the same data type as they are. So in this case, this is an array of integers, so I can expect to have integers in there and nothing else. If it's an array of pointers, then those pointers will typically be pointing to one data type, and that's it as well. And so... The, again, going back to the advantages and disadvantages of that, you know, we can kind of put it as to the pros and the cons of using an array data structure is, well, I don't know, hopefully we have people watching and you guys can chip in, but if not, then let me tell you one quick pro. And that quick pro is access time. So when it comes to accessing any member of an array, any specific index, of that array, you can do that immediately in constant time. Now, by constant time, I'm saying that 
no matter what spot of the array you want to access, you can access it immediately. And why is that the case? Because you know the address of where that is stored. Because as we saw, if we have an array like this one, and this happens to be address 300, which of course is in hex, and this is integers, and each integer is of size four bytes, then that means that if we're trying to access this element here, which the index of that would be five, all you gotta do is take four times five, which is 20, and add that to this. Now, this 20 is an integer, so in hex it would actually be uh, uh, one, four, I suppose. That would be 20, because 16, I think. Uh, zero, one, two, maybe it might be three. No, no, this is right. So then the real address of this would be zero x three one four, right? What you know, assuming I did the hex math right, and if I didn't, you get the point. So okay, thank you, thank you for confirming that. So yeah, so essentially, that math can happen very quickly. That's the whole thing about pointer arithmetic, and so you can access immediately any member of the array, and this is very very use useful because, it you know, as we will see with with some of the data structures, that is not always the case. In some data structures, you can't access everything immediately. With an array, you can't because it's just somewhere in memory and you can use a basic multiplication to figure out the shift that you have to go, which in this case is, of course, one four. And, uh, and that's pretty much where you gotta, you're going to find it. Like there's no, there's no magic in there. And so that is a pro. That's definitely a pro is access time. Now, if you're looking for something in the array, that's a different story. Like, let's say that you're actually looking in this array for a specific number. You gotta scan the entire array and see whether it's there or not. That's a different story. I'm not talking about that when I mean access time. I'm talking about if you wanna access a specific spot. If you're searching, it's a whole different story. The best thing you can do when you're searching for something is pretty much looking at the entire list. Cause in the worst case scenario, which you learn in 302 about time complexity and whatnot, but as a quick teaser of that, you, you typically look at the worst case scenario and the worst case scenario for searching for something is that it's not there. And why is that the worst case? Let's think about it. The only way that you can confirm that something is not found in a list is by looking through the entire list, right? So you have to look at every single one of them, right? So like, let's say that uh, you got 500 people in the room and you're looking for your friend to see if he's there in this party, right? So worst case scenario, you have to like literally check with every single person in the room to see if he's there. And then after you check all of them, can you say, oh, okay, I guess he's not there. The second worst case scenario is like the last person that you check after looking at 499, then the last one, that 500, is actually your friend. That would be the second worst case scenario, right? But the worst worst is of course not being there because you gotta search for him, because you don't know that, right? So that applies too with this. With an array or with a linked list or with any other structure, if you're trying to search for something, the worst case is typically going to be the size of the array or the size of the data structure. Are there better ways about that? Of course there are. In the case of arrays, one of the things you can do is sort the array. And if you sort the array, then you can use something known as binary search to decrease the search time from searching the entire array to only searching a part of it that is equivalent to the logarithm of the size of the array. That's all I'll say about that. You'll learn about that all in 302. Uh, although I do recommend that you look at binary search on your own. If we have time, maybe we'll spend a little bit on that because uh, it's one of those kind of topics that's just kind of like, you should just know it, but we don't really have time in either of the classes to, to show you, so. But uh, maybe we will if we have time, okay? But anyways, the point is that, again, access time, I'm not talking about any of that searching. I am merely talking about, can I get to the fifth item of this list immediately? And the answer is yes, because of pointer arithmetic. So that's a pro. Let's kind of switch over to the cons now. The main disadvantages of an array is, let's say that we have a list of numbers here. So let me go ahead and put in a couple of numbers. One, two, three, five, eight, three, seven, one, okay? So I have this list of numbers and let's say that I would like to insert a number into this array. Let's say that the number that I wanna insert has to go in as the second number of the array second number okay and the number i'm trying to enter is number zero and i would like to insert in the second spot the second spot is of course index one but there's something already there so 
what I want to do is I want to kind of squish it in between there. So I want to put it in between the, the one and the two. So my only choice to be able to do that is to, if there is space in the array, which in this case there is, I can shift all of the numbers in the array currently, you know, by one spot, and then I'll be able to have a spot. But that of course involves quite a bit of work because I got to erase that copy it over well I guess technically copy first and then erase so you don't forget and then keep doing that for every single item that I need to to move to be able to to make a spot for it right so basically the entire array potentially has to shift in the worst case scenario again it's going to be the entire array the worst case scenario hopefully you can kind of guess what that would be that would be if I'm trying to insert at the front of the array right but also just imagine that I'm trying to insert into an array that is already full. I have to make a brand new array that is one size bigger, at least. I could make it big. I could make it even bigger than that if I wanted to expect more numbers to be put in. But you know, in the simplest case, I could make it just the same size of the array plus one. And then now I copy everything over. And then as I'm copying it, I put this thing that I want to put in the right spot. But anyways, in this case here, I had to basically shift all of these numbers and now I finally made a spot to put my zero in as a, as the second number so this is actually the biggest disadvantages of an array and that is that when I'm trying to insert something into the array which is known as insertion I have to shift things around there's no magical way to like part the C's kind of thing and just put the number in there that's not the way it works the way this is stored in memory right and so because of that it's a very inefficient operation. Similarly, if you delete something from the array, you run into the same idea, right? There's sort of, actually, there's two ways that you could kind of deal with the, the deletion in, in the array. One way is, of course, like, let's say I want to delete the eight. What do I have to do? Well, I can't just leave a gap there, so I, I shift all the numbers in front of the eight by one, and then I just kind of leave the end of the array blank. Alternatively, if I always want to make sure the array is full, if I delete a number, then I, again, I have to make a brand new array that is the size of the current array minus one, copy all of the elements over minus the one that I want to delete, and now I'm done. That is, of course, another very expensive operation, right? That involves a lot of copying and moving and data. And I know you might, what you're thinking, well, it, it's so fast, it doesn't matter. It does matter when you're dealing with something bigger than an array of size 10. So it, it, it is considerably... Uh, a problem actually when you're dealing with like big data imagine Facebook with all its data imagine that it has a, a table with all of the users in the in, in there and somebody makes a brand new account and then they kept that as an array they'd have to like shift the entire array by one just to put this in right that that would not go very well that would take a lot of time because it's gigabytes and terabytes of big data actually it's more than terabytes it's the Forgot, but I, how much I read at some point. Facebook deals with, I think, I think over a thousand terabytes, which would be peta. I think it's peta is the next one, petabytes uh, per day. I can't remember that number is accurate, but it's a really big number. Uh, it takes two hours to make an account. <laughs> I guess it's then shifting the array, right? Well, no, I mean, in reality, Facebook does a whole different thing. They use a database and things like that. But uh, yeah, ultimately, what I'm trying to get to is that it can be very expensive to insert and to delete from the array. Now, you might be thinking, okay, what if, at least with the delete, what I do is I just kind of leave the spot blank and skip it. You can do that, but now you have a different problem. Your searching, well, your, your access time is going to, get affected by that because now things may not be exactly what you expect them to be like the fourth number of the array is not at the index three right zero one two three it's at index like five or two or whatever depending on how you shifted things and so that affects that negatively and then you defeat the whole purpose of the array which is to you know you, you want the pros right if you're gonna get the cons of something then you at least better get the pros right otherwise if you're just getting cons then why are you using this right it's like I'm going to get an electric car because I want to save gas. But then, you know, you get the electric car and then, like, there's no electricity to use. Like, like I don't know, like an EMP blew up the entire city line. 
So then you're like, why did you get the electric car in the first place, right? So like that's the whole point. Like if you're doing something, you want to get the advantages along with the disadvantages. I guess the disadvantage of a car, electric car, would be like range, maybe, right? Because they don't have like I guess charging time or whatever. I don't know, that's a weird example, but you get you get the idea, right? You want to have the pros of something if you're going to have to deal with the cons of it. So, anyways, we're not too happy with this in computer science. I mean, we we, we want to have our cake, you know. We want to have the the pros, but we also want to not have the cons. In Trio Two, I will well not me, but whoever you take it with, will show you a solution to that. But for now, we're going to show you at least a partial solution to that. And that partial solution is going to come in the form of a link list. What a link list is going to do is it's going to basically flip this table around. It's going to make the cons the pros, and it's going to make the pros the cons. It's not the best, but I suppose if we did the electric car example, it would be like, well, the alternative is an internal combustion engine, so you don't have the cons of like range and whatnot but now you're going to spend more money because of gas, I suppose. All right. So that's the kind of, that's kind of the, what we're going with this. So how does a link list achieve good insertion and deletion time, but lose on access time? So let me tell you the basic idea of how a link list works. As the name implies, a link list is a list that is linked. Okay. Surprise, surprise. So, for now, I would like you to consider each of these little squares I'm about to draw one of the numbers in my array. <coughs> and so, I forgot the ordering of them, but it was like one, zero, two, three. So, one, zero, two, three, and then what was after that? Five. Oh, let's just put that many, not more, okay? So, what I'm going to do is, in addition to keeping in this sort of floating space, these integers, I'm going to keep a second component associated to this. Now, how can I do this? How can I keep two things in one component? Well, it's no longer just an array of integers or just some data type of integers. I'm keeping two things. I can do that using a single, single class, simple class or a struct. And I'm actually going to keep the data itself, which in this case is integers, but can be anything else. And I'm also going to keep another component that I'm going to call the link component. And that is a pointer. Now, what kind of pointer is it? It's a pointer of whatever you call the class that is containing this. Now, what is a good name for that? The good name for that that everybody uses is called a node. And so that's just a name you're gonna, I mean, to me it just sounds normal, but maybe to someone that's never heard it, it might sound weird. Maybe after the lecture, you'll see as to the why they call it a node. Although, I don't know, I never actually can stop and think. I mean, I get it like from a, like networking point of view, a node, we could think of that as a spot in the in the in the network. But uh yeah. Um but anyways, we're gonna call it a node, okay? Just accept that. So essentially, although hey, you're, when you're coding, you can code whatever you want, I suppose. But uh so what what this link is going to do is it's gonna point or link to the next item in our list. So in this case it's zero. And then this, of course, has its own data and link component. The data, of course, will contain a zero, and the link will point to the next item in the list. And that's pretty much how this is going to go. Now, in this case, I do the arrow like that because, you know, just not run out of space. But the reality of things is that how this is being stored in memory, it can be like an entire, like, mess. Because at the end of the day, you got your integer here and probably your pointer which in this case is a node pointer somewhere else and then it's a pointer so it can point to anywhere in memory and as you'll see the nodes don't have to be necessarily in, in like a specific order they can be like all over the place like it's whatever but when you're drawing it it makes more visual sense to put it in the order that you expect this to be like right to left and things like that so anyways okay you still haven't shown me how I get better act, how, you know, how, how I get better insertion and deletion time. Well, here's the thing with this, with these linked lists, right? It's all these linked nodes. Suppose that I would like to insert something in between the zero and the two. I would like to insert a eight. So I create a brand new node that is going to contain it. And now what I want to do is I want to kind of stick it in here in between them. Well, 
it's quite simple to do that actually all I have to do is change some pointers around so first of all I can make since the next number after the 8 is still going to be the 2 because I want to put it in between the 0 and the 2 I can make this point to this how do I make that point to that well I just got to copy this pointer right because that's pointing to this to the address of where this is so I that's one line of code basically to make that point there and then the next thing I want to do is instead of having the 0 point to the 2 I'm going to kind of cut that link and instead I'm going to make that point to the 8 like that which is just another line of code potentially and then bam just like that by switching two pointers around I have basically inserted the 8 into my link list I can do this in constant time again so I can make it as fast as I could access things in the array so I have effectively solved the problem of arrays that is slow insertion time all right let's talk about delete so suppose that i want to delete the uh, the three suppose i want to delete the three okay all i really gotta do is just change one pointer well a little more to that but it, in the most basic sense it's just a pointer if i want to change the two all i gotta do is erase this and instead of having a point to the to the three let's just make a point to the five and then just kind of cut three out of there essentially so that's enough that you, that's pretty much it. Now you have one zero eight two five. However, it's not quite fully it because this is probably dynamically allocated and you want to delete it. So you need to call delete on that. So like delete the three so that it dynamically deallocates so you don't have a memory leak. And I'll show you all of that in code, but essentially it's very fast. Again, you are only deallocating that. You don't have to do any shifting or anything like that. So you basically have fast insertion, fast deletion. However, I said that this was going to be flipped. So you might be asking, why is this slow access time? Well, here's why. When you're looking again at your, uh, at your memory, as I said, where these things are stored could be just about anywhere in memory. They don't necessarily have to be stored in a, in a, you know, a, a linear fashion. You know, the first thing and then the second thing and then the third thing. And you can see why. If I insert something here, like the 8, you know, that got allocated in memory somewhere. And not necessarily in the right order, right? And so, basically, there's no, there's no pattern between how this is shown here and how it's actually stored in memory. So you can't rely on that for accessing things. The only way you can access things is by using the pointers. So if I want to access the 8, what I actually have to do is I don't have a direct way of getting there. There's no way of accessing the 8. What I can do is typically when you see a linked list is you have what's known as a head pointer. And the head pointer usually points to the first item of the linked list. That head pointer is something that you store in a variable, in a class, your linked list class or whatever it is. And so if you would like to access the first item of the linked list, all you have to do is look at what the head is pointing to. That's fast. That's also constant time. No problem there. But suppose that I want to access the second item in the linked list. There's no direct pointer there. The only pointer that knows where the zero is stored is the link here. But to access that link, I have to first access that node. So I have to access the head pointer, get here, read this link pointer, and then access there. And now finally, I am at the zero and I can do whatever I want, whether the lead insert or just print it out, confirm that I have a zero, whatever it is. Similarly, if I wanted to access the two, there's no direct way to access the two. So what do I do? I have to access the one, take this pointer to get to the zero, take this pointer, get to the eight, take this pointer and get to the two. This is like, imagine that you're asking directions to like four different people before you get to what you're looking for. And instead of the person telling you where it is, they can only, it's kind of like a, like a clue. They can only tell you to the next clue. And then you got to go to that person and ask them to go to the next clue. So it's like, you're asking like, how do I get to UNLV? And they're like, well, go to like the 215. And then once you get to the 215, they're like, well, from here, take the 215 to like a flamingo. And, or actually, the two, take the 215 to the 15, to the okay? And then you go to the 15, then you gotta ask, okay, what do I have to get out on the 15? Well, now you gotta get out on flamingo. So then you get out on flamingo. Okay, now what do I do? Well, you gotta drive down all the way until, uh, uh, What's that one road? Paradise? No, Sunset? Harmon. Harmon. I think that's Harmon, right? It's been so long at this point. It's kind of sad. You know, you turn to Cottage Grove. 
right? And so, or Maryland, so let's just say Maryland, okay? I know that one's for sure. So yeah, you gotta go into Maryland, right? So, so basically this is like you asking directions for every single one of them. So there's no shortcut. There's no magical way of getting there in one go. That is what makes this slow. And in the worst case scenario is of course, if you're trying to access the last item in the linked list. If you're trying to access the last item of the linked list, then you basically have to go through the entire thing to get there and that's extremely slow. So you get your pros with access and with, with, with insertion and deletion, but you get your con with access time. So you might be asking yourself, okay, if I can't, if it takes me so long to access the last item of the linked list, why don't I just make another pointer that points to the last item of the linked list? And now I can, that's like, that's like, that's like the cheat code to just immediately go to UNLV if that was the last thing. Well, that would work, yes. You would indeed make both the beginning of the link list and the end accessible in constant time, just like you can with arrays. But the slowest thing to access here would actually be the second to last thing. Because that one you don't have a pointer to and you don't have an easy way of getting there. You have to basically go through there to get there. So then you might be like, okay, well, let me just make another pointer and call it like second to last or something. You can do that, but again, now the problem is gonna be the eight. And so you can do this all day. And what you would essentially end up if you make a bunch of pointers to this is you would end up with something that looks more like this. So you got a bunch of linked lists and then you basically got like an array of pointers at this point that like point to each spot. They're like your shortcut path. Well, that's the thing. You got an array of these things. Then if you're trying to insert something on the linked list, you got to also update this array. And so you defeat the whole purpose of the linked list. So there's no way around the access time solution. It is useful to have a tail pointer that is very common to be seen in a linked list. It will become useful when we're trying to use a queue or stack a, using a, implement it using a linked list uh, at the end of the semester. But, you know, that's kind of the end of that. They don't usually do pointers for the in-between ones. So that's sort of the introductory into a linked list. Let's talk a little bit more about how this is actually implemented, okay? So let's start by looking at the nodes themselves. So to make sure we're on the same page, instead of storing stuff in an array, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little class, okay? And this little class, you can make it a struct by the way, because you're gonna make it public anyways. We're gonna call it node. And in this class, there's gonna be two variables. One of them is gonna be the data, which you can make template, by the way, you can make it a template if you would like it to be flexible, or you can make it a fixed data type. Let's say we're gonna make a template. You can store it like this. However, you could also store it as a pointer itself if you wanted to. It's kind of like making an array of integers versus making an array of integer pointers that then point to integers that are dynamically allocated. Um, it, it doesn't really matter, but I don't want to lose you in all those fanciness. So we'll keep it simple and just make it a not pointer. But you do need a pointer in some sort. You need to point it to the next node. And so what you're going to do is you're going to make a pointer of node type. Notice that the next node here is the same type as the class name. That's okay, because it's just a pointer. If you're trying to make an object there, this will not compile. This will like never compile. If you try to, if you, if you try to do this, like if you try to make an object of class A, and inside of class A, you have another object of A, the compiler gives you in there and says like, yo, it's impossible. This is like Inception. It's like, it's like a Batroshka doll or something. So that doesn't work. But it does work if you make it a pointer, because that doesn't mean it's always gonna be pointing to another object, right? And, then, and for sure it will not when you first declare it. You can, of course, use malloc for this and then allocate it inside the constructor and then still make the Matroshka doll. And that time the compiler won't stop you. You'll just uh, crash when you, you run out of memory when you try to create an object of the class. So that's always interesting to do. We might try it later just so you can see that. But uh, for now, there's a couple of names that we can use to that pointer. So um, I'm actually going to use the word next because that's what I am personally comfortable with. But as I said, a lot of people call it link. So what does that look like in the picture? We have our, our node right here, and it's made up of two of the two components. The components being the data component, and then the, the link component, which goes usually by the name of next, 
or link. Those are the popular ones. Um, yeah, I can't really think of any other ones. So when you typically draw that, what you do is you just put an arrow like this. And what I personally like to do is when it's not pointing to anything, so I, I usually set it to null, and I, I represent that with a little circle, but that's just my personal notation. I don't think that's a legit thing, but it makes me sense. It makes sense to me. So if you see me do that, which I might have done already at some point, I don't know. That's that's kind of where that's coming from. Okay. So, anyways, uh, I have my class. I have the two class variables that I want. This is technically enough, but I'm going to put in one more thing that I highly encourage you to do when you're working with uh, with a linked list, and that's a constructor. We're going to put a constructor that takes one parameter. We're actually going to, so you're going to get confused, we'll call it D. So you're going to take a parameter of whatever your data needs to be stored in it. And then in addition to that, I can take advantage and initialize the next component or the link component to null. Okay, and once I do that, let me scoot this over a little bit. It makes my code less prone to errors. Data gets the, I could have done that also here, but uh, I ran out of space, so that's okay. So anyways, there's a couple of things here. When I make a node, I typically would like to automatically fill it with the right data. And that is literally I wasn't, I didn't mean to use the word data there, but it actually worked out with the right data because it's called data. So yeah, I want to actually fill the data variable with the right information. So I want to fill it with the right data. So at, when I'm making the node, so like when I'm making a node, I can say something like in, in main, I can say like node made out of an integer and then uh, call it a and then that gets a constructor uh, sorry I'm thinking of how to I, I'm thinking dynamic but uh, if I'm not if I'm not doing a dynamic I'm thinking like how do I put the uh, yeah I would actually go here like this okay so that's where you put the constructor so then I would say something like five okay or if it was dynamic, which would be more practical, which is more of what I'm thinking of in my head right now, would be a node int, let's call this one B, gets new node, I think you gotta put the word int in here, and then five, like that, okay? I don't remember if you got to put the note part here, but we'll figure that out in a second. But the point being here that at the time that you make the node, you actually populate it with the data that you want. Otherwise, why did you make it in the first place? Furthermore, as you will find out, it is very important to set things to null when dealing with pointers, right? I mean, I think you found that at this point already. But it's always very, very useful to do that because that's how you know that they're not pointing to something valid. So it makes sense to put it in your constructor because at this point in time, this node is just like living on its own. It's not pointing to anything. It's not part of a linked list. It will be probably, but not right now. So it just makes sense to have it set to null and not to some garbage value that you might get confused with later. So that's why I personally encourage you to set your next pointer or your link pointer to null at construction time. So when you, when you create the object like that okay so anyways as long as you follow this basic code here you have a way of building a node at this point it's just a matter of making a bunch of these so uh, I won't do any more code now because I'd rather do it in the computer but uh, let me make sure I, I clarify some other terminology which I, I think I already did but let's just make sure for sure that we go over this and the first one is that head pointer that I was talking about a minute ago. So when you got yourself a node and that node is connected to another node, so I can just copy and paste for that. And we just connected to a third node. And then this node is pointing to null, okay? So the way you 
have access to this whole thing. And these nodes, by the way, are pretty much 100% of the time going to be dynamically allocated. You will never do this one, which is why I was like thinking for a minute. You will always do it dynamically allocated because that's the whole advantage of this is that you want to be able to make those notes on the fly, right? So you can insert and delete it anytime you want. So it makes no sense to, to have them be static. So you will always be doing something like this. And so because of that, you, uh, you have no idea where they're going to be stored in memory. So you definitely need to have a way of accessing the first node of the chain. And so that is where your head pointer is going to come in, as I was saying earlier. And that will point to null when the list is empty or to the first item of the list when it's not empty. Again, sometimes it's quite useful to have a tail pointer, but not to anything in between. So that's another one that you will keep, you can keep track of. But that's it. That's pretty much it. In fact, when you're making a linked list class, you'll see that the only class variables you have are head and tail pointer, and that's it. You don't actually keep any note. Well, the head and tail pointers are of node type, so they're still node pointers, but uh, they don't, they're just pointing to node at the beginning. Are there cons to a vector over a linked list? That's a good question. So a vector is basically just an array. It's not a linked list. And the, the same cons that apply to a link to a array actually apply to a vector. You just don't see it because it happens behind the scenes. So with the vector, you have the same ability to have quick access time because you can just, I mean, you, you can you can basically write the same syntax and say like if i, and if a was a vector, this would work. However, while yes, you can use the pushback function to insert and you can use things like erase to delete from the vector, and it happens quickly to your eyes, internally, there is there is shifting going on for the array. And when you're trying to insert into the into a full array, it does resize behind the scenes. So the vector class, and we did do a vector, you know, we did the Victor class, which was the fake vector class. The way we did that is pretty much the way that it's implemented in, in, in an actual, in the real vector class, which is, it's just an array that behind the scenes does the resizing per needed, but it does not get around this problem. It just, it just hides it from view basically. So yeah, so vectors are cool. But at the end of the day, if what you're looking for is fast insert and delete, you have to go with a linked list. So, yeah. But that's a good thing you brought that up with vectors because a lot of the times people think vectors are more like linked list and arrays, but they're not. They're, they're, they're totally arrays. They're well-made arrays, like thanks to all the cool functions around them. But, yep, it's just basic arrays at the end of the day. Let's see if I got anything on my notes. Um, yeah, let me make a point about the memory stuff. So let me actually, I want to make sure that I actually get this. You know, make sure you guys actually get this. So suppose that I'm going to make, you know, I, I have, a, I, again, we haven't done any code for the actual class, but you, you get it. There's a head, there's a tail pointer, there's notes. So you start out with just a head pointer. Let's say we don't have a tail pointer in this example. Okay, so we got a head pointer. That has to be stored in, mem in memory somewhere. So we're gonna say that's stored right here, the head pointer. And right now it's just pointing to null. Okay, so I go ahead and dynamically allocate a brand new node. That means that I'm gonna have, and let's say I'm, I'm using integer. So that's gonna be an integer. And then another node pointer, which is basically my next pointer, right? And that gets just allocated there in that spot in memory. Once I allocate it, I want to make sure that it's pointing to the, you know, the, the beginning of the linked list. So I essentially copy over the, this address. So let's say this is address 300. I am copying that address into the head. So now the head contains, we'll say this is head so we don't forget, 0x30. Okay, and this itself is maybe address 100. Now I say 100, but of course this is x, right? Aren't there link lists that goes around in circles where the end points to the first one? Yes. So what I'm going over right now is called a singly link list. And that is when they only have one pointer. But yes, there is a version of a link list that has a previous pointer that points to the one behind it. That is known as a double link list. And we won't cover that until after the midterm. That way, I didn't want to bring that up yet because 
I don't want to confuse you guys with that. But we will definitely have to. We will definitely cover that just after the midterm, unless we really run out of things to talk about. But no, because we only got essentially two, three days before the midterm, so I don't think we'll get to double the link list. But we will cover though, so don't worry. So, anyways, back to the single link list. Essentially, we have a we we have a node, and now let's say we want to make another node. We want to make another node. Let's say that one gets allocated here. So we call new. You know, we get an integer, and then we get the node pointer with it. And this one's at address four hundred, let's say. And so, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this pointer instead of pointing to null as it is now, is gonna to point to the next node. So that means that this node pointer here is actually gonna to point to address 400 where the next node is. So the way we have this is this is pointing here, and this is pointing here. And then this one's pointing to null right now. Let's add one more node in here. We add in another node here which means we have to allocate a new node. So let's say that gets allocated here, because again, we have no control of where in memory it gets allocated like that. That's the operating system. We just, we don't have control over that. This is an address like 150, it's not to scale. Okay, then that's what this stores, 150. So now this is actually pointing up. And as there you can see why it's not you know, in a sort of contiguous, continuous fashion, basically. Even though the linked list is like, you know, this goes there, or this goes there, 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 the pointers themselves is like down, down, up. And then the next spot could be maybe like here, you know, and then like here, and again, it just becomes a mess. So that's why you need to be just like, you have to go to the pointers to see where, where it takes you. It's like following a treasure map and you go to each step to go to the next. You can't skip steps, okay? So anyways, I think that's enough talking. Let's do some coding. It's hot. All right, so first, let's go ahead and start by making that note class that I made already. So maybe I'll, I'll pull it up here. Okay, so now what I did is I copied and pasted it on that one spot that actually shows up here. Uh, yeah, because it was on the other side. So, yeah, the technology is not there yet. It shifted live. So, okay, this one actually. So we keep them ordered numerically. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make it templated just because I didn't want to see if I had the syntax right. I guess I already see one thing I forgot. I forgot the semicolon. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Let me do it on the one above it too. There we go. Okay. So, I got my class node and it is a template class. Why is it templated? Again, I want to be able to make it flexible. I don't have to do that. It's just, it's good practice, you know. We just learned templates not that long ago, so this is good practice. I'm gonna make it public because I don't want to make accessories and etc. But I mean, you could. I'm gonna make the constructor like I said. I'm gonna initialize the next pointer to null always. I can also use null ptr by the way instead of uh, null. But then you have to compile with C++ 11. They both basically the same thing for all you know, at the basic level at least. And I'm going to make sure that data gets initialized as well. All right, that's my constructor. Now I have to make sure I actually have the class variables data and next. Oh, and I do want to show you that thing with the infinite, like infinite creation of objects. So anyways, let's test to make sure this works by putting the two lines that we had there. So those over there. So we have node int test one gets five. And then we're going to make a pointer version of that. So node and 
PTR, but uh, huh? Okay, this syntax looks weird. Something, something's off there. New node five. Okay, some some syntax here is fishy. We'll see if this can pass. Uh, this is in folder twelve. Okay, so this is ll one. Ah, oh, compiled. Okay, and it ran too. Okay, so maybe maybe I did have the syntax right. I didn't believe. Okay, but uh, let's do one more thing inside of the uh, node function. Let's call it print function so that we can actually see if this is working. We're going to make a print function and we're going to make it do something like uh, node. We're going to say cout. First of all, make it void. And then we're going to say node. And then it's going to print out the value of it. So that would be the data. And then we're also going to print out maybe like ptr for or, or next next because the pointer next the lowercase next and then it'll print out the address so just like that and then oh and, and, and line feed after that okay so that way we can see if this worked my same print and then this one we have to use the arrow operator or we can use the asterisk dot with parentheses too very well. but of course arrow is easier less writing actually same amount of writing no, no less writing less writing because we don't the parentheses takes more character it's just more readable to use the arrow anyways so yeah it worked I, I like how I had no creativity with the number five using it twice but other than that it, it pretty much worked okay so we're good in that regards so I'm glad that I remember my syntax for the for the for the uh, template stuff. So, if this was not templated, you would just remove this part here and then this part here, and this would work the same way. Okay. But uh, the fact that we made a template, it means that, like for example, we could make one of these like a car, and then we could store like a C in there, and then uh, this would this would actually work because it's templated. Uh, Cannot convert known int. Oh, I, I didn't change it on this one. Oops. So, there we go. So, car car. Now you can see node C, right? So, that's the cool thing about making it a templated node, that now it works for anything, right? Now, of course, if I make the node be some like custom class, then this is not going to work because of the C out. I would have to overload the operators, right? So, we know how to do that too, but we're not going to do it. Kinda too much time. Uh, let me make this single line of code though, because I'm sure we're going to run out of space later. So I'll leave that like that. In fact, I can even make it one full line of code like that. Yeah, cool. Same with this one, actually. Okay, so that is my node class. So if I wanted to make a linked list, I can do that already, actually. Uh, let me switch back to just making a actually yeah, let's do cars cars is kind of cool we can make like a hello or something so let's make a let's make an h and then let's make an e and then let's make a couple of, of more letters let's make an l actually let's make just h e l okay and so if i want to link all of these together i can do that i can do that very easily what i have to do is update the pointers so for example I want to update test one's pointer, the one that says next. Well, I guess this is the dot because it's a static one. Next, and then I want to update that. That's a pointer. I want to update it to whatever PTR is pointing to. Because PTR is the second node here. So this will actually link the nodes. This will make the connection from the first node to the second node. All right, let's link the E to the L. In this case, because that is a pointer, I will use the arrows to do next. And then I'll update that to say PTR2, I suppose. This should be PTR2, otherwise it won't compile. Okay? And then I can basically make a brand new node too. So I can say like PTR2 is next. It's going to get uh, a brand new node. That is going to be the 
other L of hello. And finally, I could do PTR to next and then it give that a name, but it doesn't have a name right now. That's just a, it's, it, it's, it's here, but it doesn't have a name. So if I want to link to the, to the next component of this one, I have to use PTR2 next, next. And then I can make that mean the new node for O. Now this is the part that, that some people get lost in. So don't feel bad if like you're like, what? Why is there a next next there? Let's make sure we understand what that means. So what I'm doing there is I, I currently have the following scenario. Let's start actually all the way with the H. So I have test one, and test one's next is this pointer here that is currently pointing to PTR, which has the E. PTR's next, which is line, oh, it's like slightly cut off the line number. Let me let me move that by a little bit. There we go. Okay. So PTR's uh, PTR's next is line 18. Okay. That is pointing it to PTR2. So this here is the next. So PTR next is pointing to PTR2. In fact, let me make that a big arrow. After all, this you know doesn't really matter. So it gives me more space. Okay? Maybe a little bit bigger too. So that's the L. This is PTR2. This here is the next pointer in PTR2. So when I say PTR2 next in, in lines 19, I am making this point to something, but this something doesn't have a name associated with it. I did use a new operator, so I am making a brand new node, but this node does not have like an actual name. It doesn't have a variable associated with it. That's perfectly fine because the pointer is taking me there. So I am just going to call this PTR2's next. So this is PTR2's next technically, whatever this is pointing to. Therefore. The next here is PTR2's next, next. So that's like saying your kid's kid, basically, right? So the kid of the kid, the grandkid, basically. And so that is pointing to, in this case, the other node that we're making, because this, this is another L. So this over here is PTR next, next itself. However, if I was to make another node here, I would have to add another next to go there. Okay? So, oh, that got cut off over there. My bad. Let me shift that a little bit. Ah. Let's switch over to this, okay? So, I got test one. Test one's next points to PTR. That has a name, so I can just use PTR next to point to PTR2, which has a name as well. I can use PTR2 next to point to this node. Now, this is a node that doesn't have a name associated with it, so the only way that I can access the next pointer of that node is by saying PTR2 next next. That is this pointer right here. So if I wanted to access the data component. Let's say that I want to access that O. That O is actually located at PTR2 next next data. Okay? That one is that one is again tricky. So let's see what, how that actually worked out. So PTR2's next is this pointer. PTR2 is this node right here. PTR2 next is this pointer which is pointing to this node here. So that is basically what PTR2 next is. If I wanted to get the data of this, I could say PTR2 next data, and that would give me here. But I want to point out to the pointer, to the next pointer in PTR2 next, which is this one. This here, to be able to access that, I basically have to do PTR2 next next. So that second next basically takes me here. And then if I want to access the data component of that, I just add the word data added. So that'll take me basically to here. If I wanted to access the next component of that instead of the data component, that is how I get this thing here with the three nexus. 
Suppose that I wanted to make a circle. I could. I could make a linked list as like a little circle that's going like that. All I got to do is basically make this point to the test over there. So I can do that very easily by saying test one. So now that is going to be pointing to the H. H is in hello. Okay. But you don't typically do that with a linked list. You don't like making those circular things. You typically just want to set it to null. And that is the way you know that that's the end of the list. Okay. So to show you that this really does work like that, let us try and print it out. So if I do PTR2 next, next data, or instead of data, let's call the print function in that, then that's going to print us the data. So you can see that's the O from hello. If I take out one of the next, then I should be looking at one at the second L of hello. But you end, look, look at this. The next pointer is not uh, it's not zero. That's good because right now it's basically pointing to the to the O, right? The the L is pointing to the O. That's actually where the O lives. If I run it again, it's gonna be a different address. That's okay because the operating system decides where those addresses are. So let's actually look at some of these addresses. This is interesting. So look at the PTR address. Look at three addresses. Sorry, I want, I want to like sneeze. It's, like, it's, it's itching my nose. So let's look at PTR2. Let's look at PTR2 next. And then let's look at PTR2 next next. So if we print these three out, we got the E-L-L-O, right? Well, well no, sorry, L-L-O, we don't have the H-E. Look at these addresses. So this is pointing to wherever this is, and then this is pointing to wherever this is, and this is pointing to null because it's the end of the list. Now in this case, they happen to be pretty much next to each other. That doesn't have to be always the case. It is the case here because of how we're getting the memory allocated, but it doesn't have to be, especially if you start to insert things right in the middle of two things. So how do we do that? Suppose that we want to insert, you know, instead of saying hello, we can we want to write help low, help low. Yeah, let's do that, okay? So we can do that, you know, we're we'll doing it at the bottom by creating a brand new node and storing that after the first L, which is this one. So basically I want to say PTR2 next, which is where the second L is, that's going to make, it make a brand new node that would have the P. However, I have a bit of a problem here. This will work, at least for the P part. I can prove it to you by calling print again of all three things. However, actually, let's leave that in there. First of all, this is probably going to sec fall. Well, assuming that I don't forget the R. This should, I think it'll sec fault. Yeah, sec fault. Why did it sec fault? Here's why. When I went ahead and inserted the P, I basically cut the link off to the other L, right? So if I, if I draw what happened here, I had H, E, L, L, O. And what I did is I said, okay, take the L's pointer. So take this one right here. And instead, pretty much go ahead and do, uh, oh, pretty much make a brand new pointer that says P in it. And now this is, first of all, memory leaked because I have no access to it anymore. I lost that one. The only way to get to those notes is with those pointers, and now I've lost them. So that's a memory leak there, two memory leaks, technically. But the second thing is, what happened now is, when I was printing it, you will see that I did indeed print out you know, the L and the P, but the P's next pointer is null because when I created it, it's null, right? And that's okay. This is not pointing to anything. So when I try to dereference that by saying PTR2 next, next, 
this is basically null. So this whole thing here is like a null. And then I'm trying to dereference that null pointer with the print function. That's why I get a sec fault. Okay? So, how do I fix that? Well, let's fix it by uh, connecting the, the P to the L, to the L, right? So we want to make sure we, we connect this in here because we're putting it in between. The problem is that we have no way of accessing the L because we overwrote that. We overwrote that when we did the assignment. So what do we need to do? We need to create a temporary pointer call it temp and store that address there before we delete it. So PTR2 next. Now that it's stored there, we can go ahead and create the P, put it in. We can even print it if we wanted to, but after we put it in, we want to update that pointer of that P so we can say PTR to next, next, and then we can copy that to wherever, or make that point to wherever temp is, which is where the L is. By doing this, we now have fixed our issue. And then we call print on these two things, then uh, we should be good to go. We can even call print on the, uh, on another one here. We can do next again. As you can see, we get the L, the P, the L, and the O. And interestingly enough, those addresses look the same. Why is that the case? Oh, it's because we're only looking at these three. We only got three prints in there. So let me, uh, let me move this print here. So there you go. You can see there that we got the, the, uh, the last four prints of this are different addresses. Okay. So this is the basics of a linked list, but it's a mess to try to be doing this all in main like this. So what we really want to do is we want to make a class called linked list that handles all of this. Just like vectors have a class and you don't have to deal with any of this nastiness. You want to be able to take advantage of a linked list and do it the same way, where you just make nodes, you know, put them in the list, and don't worry about all this whole allocation, the allocation and shifting and whatnot. You want that you want to make it easy for the user, essentially. So that's gonna be the next step. So let's go ahead and take our node class, because that's gonna be useful. Let's put it in another file and then pick up from there. Okay? So this will take multiple classes probably. Um, but we'll start today since we still got 10 minutes. So we're going to call this call linked list class. And there's a couple of things that I want to do with the linked list class. By the way, first of all, there's two primary formats of a linked list class. Now, and, and, and now I'm not talking about singly and doubly. I'm talking about there's a sorted linked list and an unsorted linked list. I'll try to see if you have time to do both of, the, both of them. In class but if not I have code for those in canvas as well a unsorted linked list is the one where you just kind of insert whatever you feel like it you just append to the end put it in the beginning it doesn't matter and the more complicated one and more interesting to code because you have to have to you know think about it more and like problem solve is a sorted linked list and that's the one where you whatever you insert it takes care of inserting it into the right spot so that it's sorted which is cool it's a cool thing to do. It's a nice introduction into like sort of data structures, which you get to explore in 302. So for now, we're going to make an unsorted linked list. And then we might modify it later on to convert it into a sorted linked list. Okay. So let's, uh, let's start by making a public and private section to our linked list. And what we want to have is for now, I suppose actually we're going to we'll make everything public and then maybe transition to make it private. Because what you want to do is you want to have the head pointer that I've been talking about for a while. But you don't usually want to make that public because bad things happen from a user point of view if they have access to that. So actually, no, let's just start out with making it private. Probably for the best. Uh, let's actually stick to the templated stuff. So let's work, we're going to make linked list templated as well. I 
think that's that's how you would do that. See if this compiles. Yeah, it compiled. Oh wait, no, we're not doing the right file. Okay, it's still compiled, so we're good. Okay, so I created a class that contains a pointer to the other class. And because it's templated, I went ahead and created a template variable and then assigned it to that. The fact that I'm using the same letter is just coincidence. It doesn't have to be the same letter. Uh, if you're trying to find an element in the linked list, how does code to find that element work? So we'll get to that. I don't know if we'll get to that today, but we're gonna make a function called search. Search and destroy, actually, because we want to be able to search and delete things. So it might be useful to have a, the destroy part of it. And essentially what you want to do is you want to keep hopping the pointers until you get to the item that you're looking for. Or you don't find it and you just get to the end of the list, which you see the null pointer. So that is tricky. And I'm actually going to show it in two different ways. Iterative way. And since we spent the last two weeks, recursive way as well. In fact, printing a linked list recursively is pretty cool too. So, and quite simple actually. So we'll do that as well. But I don't think we'll get to that today. So um, for now, I am going to just make a constructor for the linked list class. And all I'm really gonna do with this constructor is just basically set the head to null. Just to indicate that the list is empty. That's my sign that the list is empty. Okay? So, uh, next I'm going to just make a generic insert function that just appends to the linked list. Okay? Actually, ooh, no, because that's going to take a... That's going to take a while to show you the insert, actually. Um, what else can I do that doesn't require that? I can do the print, but I need the insert. No, I have to do the insert. Okay, let me just uh, introduce you to the insert, and then we'll probably call it a day, actually. So, uh, I would like to code an insert function. Actually, since I'm not making a searchable link list, it's not too bad, but still. There's four scenarios, let's see, four? One, two, three, four, yes. There's four scenarios for inserting into a linked list that you have to consider. And you have to choose which of them you want to use. If you're, if you're doing a sorted linked list, then depending on where it's supposed to go on the list, it chooses for you. Otherwise, you get to choose. So those four scenarios for inserting are, let's look at the first three, actually. Although, yeah, the, the fourth one's kind of just a weird case. Those are inserting at the beginning of the list. And the list has to be existing already. Inserting at the end of the list. And in the middle, essentially. And by middle, I mean there's at least one node before and at least one node after. And at the end, it means that there's at least one node in the list already and you're appending it to the end. And at the beginning, I mean that there's at least one node and you're inserting it in front of that. And the other cases, of course, is just the first node of the list. So I guess you could say this is like where the list is not empty when inserting, and this one is for list empty. That's easy. The, the first case there is the easiest case. If it's empty, all you gotta do is update the head pointer to point to the brand new node, right? So just make the brand new node and then stuff it in there. The other three cases are a little bit more interesting because they do require some pointer manipulation. In the case of the beginning and the end, all you gotta change is one pointer because if you're inserting at the beginning, all you gotta do is update the head pointer from pointing to that, make your brand new node. So all you gotta do is basically update the head pointer to point to your new node and then update this pointer to point to there. So I suppose I lie, two pointers technically, you're changing. But it's one pointer of the head and then one in the list. For the tail, if there's a tail pointer, then you gotta update that. If there is no tail pointer, 
then all you gotta do is basically just change the last item in your node from pointing to null to pointing to the to the to the to the to the, to the new last node and then call it a day. So that's, I suppose, the easiest case. Second from like setting in an empty list. In the empty list, I guess just to draw you what it looked like, you got nothing, make your new node, and then just instead of pointing to nothing, point to the new node. Single pointer change. Middle is tricky because you gotta, you gotta manipulate the two pointers of the one before and the one after, right? So if you got a scenario like this, and you got this, and you're trying to insert a node in the middle here. What you need to do is you need to copy the last pointer here, and then you need to copy this, or you make a brand new pointer that points there, right? So that's two pointers, two nodes that you have to change, essentially. So I'll show you how to do each of those next time. So I think I'll stop here because I don't want to start doing one of them and then do the other ones later. So we will pick up from there next time. That way, uh, you know, I don't. Uh, Otherwise, I have to repeat what I do now. And we only got three minutes left. So instead, I shall open myself for questions. Does anybody have a question about the basics of a linked list? Again, a linked list is advantages are that it can do fast insertion and deletion at the cost of a slow access time, which is the complete opposite of an array. And as you, you know, depending on the on the scenario of what you're trying to do with it that may be more important to you than access time or vice versa if the array is better in that case so if you're if you if the data that you have is never going to change then yes go with the array but if the data is constantly changing you're constantly inserting constantly deleting then the linked list may be better other than that um, as a reminder that your exam is coming in a week from next Monday so it's this your exam is the 17th on a Tuesday so almost two weeks from it's two weeks from yesterday I suppose how can we access a specific node you have to walk through the different pointers so like you're trying to access the fifth node you have to basically hop four or five pointers essentially if you're counting the head it's five I suppose yeah, five or four it's always one less than the than the location. So if it's the fifth node, it's going to be four pointers that you have to hop. And you just have to remember how many hops you've made. So you, well, you put it in a for loop and just hop four times. So I'll show you how to do that. When, I, when we, We're going to make a function called like access and then pass a number. And that number will be like the index. In fact, if we really want to be creative, we can overload the array index operator so that we can sort of use the same syntax that we use when we're doing arrays. We might do that. I actually would have to review that myself because I have not overloaded that operator in a while. But we can probably look at the documentation and be good to go. But uh, yeah, you have to basically hop the pointers and keep track of how many hops you've made so you know where you're at. So it's like, is this the fifth clue? How many clues have I gone through before getting this one? And that's how I know that this is the fifth clue or not. So yeah. It is a lot to digest indeed. It is, but this is really where things start to get interesting with pointers like polymorphism and like the creepy assignment does show you the power of pointers but from a data structure point of view this is this is kind of more of like wow okay pointers can be powerful kind of thing and this directly leads into trio too like you have to get link list down because when you get to trees that's just link list with more pointers associated with it so you have to get the foundations right and you have to practice. So, yes, you will have a linked list assignment at some point. That's right, linked list, slower access time, but extremely fast for insertion and also deletion. As long as you know where you want to delete and where it is, I suppose, because trying to get there to delete it will take time. And you'll see with it when we when, when I show you a stack in queue, I'll show you the comparison of implementing them with an array versus a linked list. You'll get to see there which one's better, faster, and easier to code. Those may not necessarily be the same data structure from them. But yeah. Although I frankly think 
implementing a, a, a queue with a linked list is so much easier than a array base as long as the linked list code you have is already working otherwise i suppose that would make it harder um, they're not, i think they're, they're not that bad okay then well since i have no more questions then this is the end of the lecture and it is also the end of the week i suppose so make sure you keep up to date with your assignments and I'll, um yeah that's it i have nothing else to say so hope you guys have a good weekend and uh stay safe out there bye <laughs>